and welcome to Tuesday night. I am so stoked about the sermon that I have to bring for you tonight. Uh, it's something that I could never share on television, probably would never share on the weekend, but we got some wild Tuesday night people in here. Isn't that right? Come on, give the Lord a hand right now for being wild. You guys, Tuesday night is the night that I can just kind of unload and share next level principles. People, seekers are here. People that are hungry from God are here. And it's phenomenal. I got some supernatural stories to tell you about starting kind of with this building that's behind us, that big pink building. The address, number one, is 777 South Flagler. You might want to write that down. That's a good number, 777. And so the story goes like this. Um, years and years ago, God began to work a plan, and I believe he's working a plan for you. And you don't see the plan until it totally unfolds because we see through a glass darkly. That's what the Bible said. We see through a glass darkly. In other words, we can't see the end of what God's doing, but trust me, he's doing something right now. Even here on this Tuesday night, he's doing something on the inside of you that'll forever change your world. So I want you to pick up your phone right now, and I want you to start taking notes, and I want you to write down some things, because I believe while I'm talking tonight, God's going to speak to you. So let's just start with this. The Bible said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So I want you to first of all say, I am a child of God. Come on now. That's right. You're a child of God. Also, I want you to understand that you're loved by God. If you don't know you're a child of God, or you th might think, well, I'm a child of God, but I don't think God likes me, because you might have a preconceived idea of what happened in your family's life, and you think, well, daddy was mad at me, or mama was displeased with me, or they called me bad names. God is nothing but love, and he loves you just the way you are. Now, he loves you too much to leave you that way. Come on, somebody. But he's working right now behind the scenes. So to get anything out of this tonight, you have to make sure that you start believing that number one, God loves you, and number two, he's not mad at you, and number three, there is a spiritual world out there. The unseen is more seen than actually the seen. Everything that was created that is visible right now, that chair that you're sitting on there in Sunset Hills or wherever you're, touch that chair, see the chair, look around the auditorium right now, you see the stage, look up to the ceiling, see how high the ceiling is. All of that stuff was created in somebody's mind first. First, you have to conceive it and believe it before you can receive it, right? Conceive it, believe it, and then you receive it. So the unseen world right now, that business that you want to start, that mate, that child, that the, you know, the doctor said you are incapable, you're incapable of having children. If God puts his super on your natural, supernaturally things happen. Come on, somebody ought to say amen. Shout amen right now. God's going to put his super on your natural. So back to this building real quick. This building is 777 South Flagler. And um, it was a supernatural event that happened for us to get in it. But first, read the scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 says this. It says that the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are meaningless nonsense to him, and he's incapable of knowing them or progressively recognizing or understanding or becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. But the spiritual man, everybody shout, that's me. But the spiritual man tries all things, examines all things, investigates all things, inquires into all things, questions and discerns all things, yet is himself to be put on trial or judged by no one who can read the meaning of everything. Verse 16, for who has known and understand the mind and the counsel and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and to instruct him and to give him knowledge? But we have the mind of Christ and hold the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of his heart. We have the mind of Christ. Now there's a difference between the mind and the brain. Okay, man is a spirit, he possesses a soul, he lives in a body, okay? So let's talk about the brain. The brain is that thing right now, first of all, raise your hand if you got a brain. Come on, everywhere, raise your hand, you got a brain. All right, good, over half of you. You've got a brain, that's great, but you also have a mind. The mind is the spiritual part of the brain, or it's the mirrored part of the brain. So God said, you have the mind of Christ. In other words, you know everything that you need to know and, and you will know everything you need to know by God supernaturally in the future. In fact, the Bible says this. He says that you have no need of any man to teach you. You have no need of a man to teach you. It's not saying that you won't receive teaching from a man, but God's saying, I'm going to reveal things to you and you won't have to have a teacher because the Holy Spirit's your teacher. So I read that scripture to tell you that if you're a non-spiritual person, 
if you think that things are, you know, people like me are weird, or people like the people around you are weird, then you're not going to get anything out of this sermon. But how many of you raise your hand and you believe in the supernatural? Come on, raise your hand right now. You believe that God is a supernatural being, that God is, He's everywhere. And just because we can't see Him, it's part of the reason is because we don't understand the physics behind it. He's moving at the speed of light. It's moving so fast, you can't see it. Okay, so I'm a pilot, so there's a propeller out there in front of the plane, and it's going like crazy, and I can't see it. It's move, It's there, though. If you stuck your hand in it, your hand goes away. It's moving. You just can't see it. If I pull out my iPhone and I take a picture of the propeller, it freezes it, and I go, yep, there sure is a propeller, but I can see straight through it because it's moving so fast. God is moving so fast, we can't even see him. He's moving beyond the speed of light. And I'm telling you right now on this Tuesday night that God is moving so fast in your situation, you can't even see him move. If he were to freeze frame you right now, you would see he is moving on the marriage. He is moving on the child. He is moving with the clients. He is moving. Come on, somebody shout amen right now. He is moving. So again, this is why it's important that scripture says, but again, the non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts of the teaching and the revelations of the Spirit of God. They are meaningless nonsense to him. How many of you like me and it's not meaningless nonsense to you? Raise your hand up here. It's not, this is very deep stuff. So when God began to drop a seed in my heart that I would pastor a church in St. Louis in Florida, first of all, my mind or reasoning got in the way. You go analytical on it. I want you to write that down. Don't go analytical. Just trust me, write it down, get the phone out. Don't go analytical. If you try to figure out in your brain and I try to figure out in my brain what's on the supernatural mind of God, we will stop, impede, slow down. It, it just it stops everything because we get our analytics involved and you can't figure out God. I can't figure out how a brown cow eats green grass and gives white milk, but I still drink it. I can't figure out how that big old ocean over there begins to pull the tide out and the water goes down and this goes a different way. God's got this. I can't set the clock on my DVD player, but God has got it. So we've got to stop going analytical. So God dropped a seed in my heart that someday I'd pastor in Florida. I didn't know how he was going to do it. But actually, he was working behind the scenes so fast, he would already he had already set things in motion that I didn't know that was going to happen in life, but it did happen. Now, God's working behind the scenes, and I don't even know it. You know, I'm actually in Dallas doing TBN one day. This guy named Randall Taylor walks up to me and says, hey, I want to put you on television all around America. I'm a you know, TV buyer. I said, well, of course you do. You sell TV time. I said, I'm not really interested in going on TV around America right now. Notice sometimes there's progressive steps. I knew in my spirit that the next step was going television in West Palm Beach. I said, but I am interested in going to West Palm Beach. He said, that's, that's crazy that you should say that. I was just in West Palm Beach last week and was negotiating some TV time. I have great relationships in West Palm Beach. He made some calls. He supernaturally got a deal for us on Fox down here. It was amazing. Now watch how God, where God guides, he provides. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. Write that down. Where God guides, he provides. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. So now, I, it's a whole nother supernatural story. I get with some friends, Dennis and Sheila Hammond, and we are at their place in the Caymans. And we're just talking about God and the things of God. And, and he was talking about, you know, I know God's gonna have you start that church in West Palm someday. Wonder when that's gonna be. I said, well, Dennis, I've gotta go on television first. And uh, he said, well, what's something like that cost? Watch this. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I had just met with Randall Taylor. I said, well, as a matter of fact, I know how much it costs. So I told him the price. I can sit at the table right now in my mind where we're at. That's the day that West Palm Beach campus was started. He said, boom, let's do it. When can we go on? Last week? I'll pay the bill for a year. Check that out. All of a sudden, we go from not having the money to go on TV. Now our bills are paid because where God guides, he provides. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. It was a supernatural happening. Now people go into our church in West Palm Beach now and they sit in the chairs and they look around and they go, hmm, well, this is awesome. This is blessing me. They don't know that church was actually started on a table at a restaurant in the Caymans. But actually it was started in eons, light years ago when God decided that I want David and Nicole Crank to pastor in St. Louis and Palm Beach the rest of their life. Their sheep know their voice and a stranger they'll not follow. That's when it started, but it was moving so fast we couldn't see it. But now it's actually slowing down and we can go, yeah, I remember that day when God paid our bill. Now you know the rest of the story. We went on Fox, we went on ABC, we went on CBS, we went on NBC. We're, on, we're the number one rated religious program in all of Palm Beach County during the weekend. Come on, give God praise for that. Isn't, isn't that incredible? God did it. Now there were a whole lot of problems on the way to the promised land, but eventually we got there. 
And the same God that did it for your church is gonna do it for you. The anointing that's on this house is on your life. When you come to church on, on Tuesday night, you're saying, I'm seeking more. I'm hungry for more. You guys had your hands worshiping a while ago with that fabulous worship team. You were actually ministering to the Lord. And now the glory of the Lord, the supernatural of God, comes down on you. Remember, praise is important. All the battles in the Bible, God sent out the praisers first, and then he sent the warriors. Because praise, the Bible said, stops, stills the avenger in his tracks. So you're not coming here singing songs on Tuesday night or on the weekend. You're here worshiping. You're pushing back darkness. You're getting closer to your supernatural breakthrough. You're unleashing the supernatural. And also, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, they're also becoming less carnal so the spiritual stuff doesn't sound like nonsense. Because if you're living in this carnal world of, and you're freaked out right now, it's election year and there's a lot going on or I thought it was gonna be my banner year and God better hurry up. He can do it in a moment. You can be married this time next week. You can have your business this time next week. You can have a complete healing this time next week. Can I get a man in here right now? It's a supernatural thing that happens and you don't know it. So now, fast forward, we go on television we don't think, you know, but back to this verse, it says, but the natural non-spiritual mind does not accept or welcome. No, we, had, we welcomed in our heart the revelations of the Spirit of God. They were not meaningless or nonsense to us. We knew we're, we're progressively going somewhere. So now, you know, the TV station says, hey, we need to, um, we need you to, you know, have a mailing address. We need more information. We knew we needed an office. Well, at that same time, Dennis was starting this organization in that pink building called Sandpoint. We didn't mention to him that we needed an address. We didn't know anything that, uh, we didn't know anything. We just got this call that morning and we were here in Palm Beach hanging out with Dennis and Sheila and we didn't tell them. Notice you don't have to tell man, you tell God. Many of your problems is you run to the phone and you should run to the throne. Come on, somebody ought to tweet that right now. Don't run to the phone, run to the throne. Say, God, I thank you, Lord. Me and Nicole said, we, we thank you, God, that we've got, we've got this. We're gonna have an office. And so we just emailed back the television station and said, we don't have an office yet, but by the, by the end of the day, we'll have a P.O. box or something. Notice God ex is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think or imagine. So we walked in this office and Dennis was starting it up and there's this huge penthouse floor and he said, you know, I just thought of something. Do you guys want an office here? And I'm like, well, you know, let me check. Yeah, we do. He said, we're just going to give, we're up here on this penthouse, and we'll just give the church a whole section of it. You guys won't owe anything. And Nicole got so excited, so she told them. She said, Dennis, you'll never believe what happened. We got this call today that we needed an office or a permanent facility for the TV station to agree to have us. And, man, he got excited, and she said, i got to email him right now. What's the address? He said, 777 South Flagler. Come on, somebody ought to praise God right now. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. We, we went in the morning from not having an office to in the evening being on the penthouse floor of the most prestigious office complex in the area and it's not gonna cost the ministry anything. You talk about praising God, you talk about super being put on your natural. 777 South Flagler became a place of ministry. It became a place of hope. People started calling in from all over Palm Beach County. People started getting saved in prisons. People started getting out of prison saying, I need to go to a church. And we didn't have a church there at the time. We just knew that God was doing something, but it takes time. Everybody shout, it takes time. Remember there's seed, then time, then the harvest. Seed, man, that's when you got the idea of the business. I had the idea of starting the ministry. It was a God idea. Also, I want you to write this down. There's good ideas and God ideas. Good ideas, they're okay, but God ideas are breakthrough. They are, they are stratosphere, put your logo on the moon, crazy stuff when it's a God idea. Good ideas, uh, I mean, it's a good idea to have a, you know, a, a Christian school, not a God idea for us. It, it was a good idea and a God idea for us to have an early childhood development center and it allowed people to get blessed and helped and employed people. And that was a God idea for us. So there's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. So now fast forward real quick. God can do supernatural things for you and we've got more Bible to prove it. Check this out. Romans 8 says, For those who are according to the flesh are controlled by an unholy desire. They set their minds and arouse those things which gratify the flesh. That means you're doing fleshly things. You're not thinking about spiritual things. But those who are according to the Spirit, notice that's a capital S, that means the Holy Spirit. Those that are controlled by the Holy Spirit, 
and his desires set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. So the best way to get the supernatural on your life with God is to get the devil off of your life. In other words, set your mind not on natural things. I want to get a job. I want to get a man. I want to get these fleshy things and say, I want to get Jesus. And the more of Jesus and his anointing comes on your life, the more you have 777 South Flagler. Which, by the way, I want to share this. The first day I went to the office, I was heading up to the office and I'm like, God, I'm scared. Because even though I got the miracle, I'm still afraid of this new dimension, new level, new devil. Also having some opposition. And you might be having opposition right now. Just because you're hitting the devil head on does not mean that's not God's will. If you're not hitting the devil on, you might be walking with the devil, homie. So you're hitting the devil head on. You're fighting. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and, and supernatural things. So you might be fighting right now, but it doesn't mean just because it's roses that it's Jesus. There was thorns. There was a cross. There was storms and troubles. But the fact is, faith people, it's not that we say we don't go through stuff. We say we go through it. We just walk through and we walk by faith. So I walked to the office that day and I was, I, when I'm walking to the office at the front door and I was there at that office for three years and I never ever before and I never ever after saw an orange bike with high handlebars on it. But the first day I did, I took a picture of it. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's an orange bike with high handlebars on it. And if you know me, or if you read the Believer's Voice of Victory in August, or you've heard my story, as a kid, I was believing God for an orange bike. I saw it in my mind's eye. I said, Dad, I see it. It has high handlebars. It's an orange bike. It has a banana seat. It has all this stuff. The day I go to that office, there is an orange bike. Now, it wasn't exactly like the one I grew up on, but the fact is, it was an orange bike with high handlebars, and I'm like, God, look at you go. Sometimes you might think you're weird because could that song actually be confirmation? Could that scene in that movie actually be telling me that? Of course, we live our life by the Word of God. But if the sign matches up with the Word, the Bible said that we'd have signs following. There is a supernatural God that can speak in a million and one ways. And he talked through Balaam's donkey. He turned water into a wine. He spit on the mud and put it in man's eye. Jesus does weird stuff. Write that down. Jesus does weird stuff. And look at your neighbor and say, yes, he does. Okay. Now watch this. Verse 8 says, because the mind of the flesh is carnal and its thoughts and purposes are hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So those who are living a life of the flesh, catering to its appetites and its impulses and its carnal natures cannot satisfy God, or can it be acceptable to God? But you are not living that life of the flesh. You are living a life of the Spirit. Come on, somebody say amen right now. The Holy Spirit of God, I'm in the Amplified, dwells in you. He directs you. He controls you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. He directs you, and He controls you. The building you're sitting in, Earth City, Wellness Springs, the church in Florida, the, the outreaches around the world, the playgrounds in Haiti, the, the churches in India. I'm just a 47-year-old high school dropout who allowed God to touch me and I believe in the supernatural and I'm controlled by the Holy Spirit. So Kenneth Copeland told me this one time. He said, he says this every day. I'm yours to command, sir. It's like a military man. I'm yours to command, sir. I'm going to say it again. Some of you need to do that. Instead of getting up and saying, I don't know if my flesh is going to make me watch that. I wonder if my flesh is going to make me eat that. I wonder if my flesh is going to make me think that. You go, I'm yours to command, sir. I'm controlled by and dwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. Not thank you, God. I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm supernaturally led. I'm supernaturally fed. God, I thank you that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And my flesh is going to obey me. Shut up, flesh. You stop it right now. You got to treat your flesh like you discipline you know, a, a puppy or a kid, you guys, no, 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 you don't, because your flesh is not saved. I'm talking to you right now. So, controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, those little signs are very, very important and many times should not be overlooked. Now, John 6, let's go to John 6. Y'all ready for this? John 6, verse 16 says, And when evening was come, his disciples went into the sea, and they entered into a ship, we see him behind us, toward Capernaum. And now it was dark, it might be dark in your world right now. And Jesus come to them. And the sea had arose by reason of a great wind. In other words, it wasn't good conditions. They were in a boat, the sea is raging, the wind is blowing, it's not a good season. And you might be there with your business, with your mind, with your marriage, with your money. 
the sea had a great wind that blew against it, and it was keeping them from their destiny. Check that out. Keeping them from their destiny. The wind will keep you from your destiny. Adversity would keep you from destiny. Staying in the natural would keep you from destiny. Verse 19. So when they had rowed about five and twenty furlongs, seeing Jesus, they're row, row, row your boat. It wasn't gently down the stream. They're rowing in the flesh. They're sweating like crazy. There's a sweatless anointing that'll come on you. And you don't even sweat anymore. They're rowing. And they saw Jesus walking on the sea, drawing nigh unto the ship. He wasn't on the ship yet, but he's getting closer. He's getting closer to you right now. And they were afraid. And by the way, they, they went about three to four miles. And if you're on a paddle boat, if you're paddling, three to four miles is a long way. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Notice his supernatural voice comes. It is I, be not afraid. He sensed their fear. Fear is the reciprocal of faith. Fear is faith, you know, false evidence appearing real. Fear is faith in reverse. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by fear in sight. We walk by faith. And verse 20 says, But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly, willingly, everybody shout willingly, they willingly received him to the ship, and immediately the ship was on the land. Immediately. So all of a sudden they're rowing, rowing, rowing. It's taking forever. And the Bible says as soon as Jesus got on their boat, immediately they were there. Time ceased to exist. The boat was supernaturally propelled. I, I talk about even Enoch. That was a supernatural thing. If you read the Bible, just Google Enoch. Enoch walked with God, and all of a sudden, God took him. He, he instead of, we've all taken airplane rides. Enoch took a plane air ride. A plane air ride, just, whoosh, he was there. That's what happened on that boat. Immediately, they were the other side. In fact, the people that were on the other side, they said, how in the world did you get here? Well, how is this possible? Because God put the super on their natural, and they were supernaturally blessed. Come on, somebody give God praise right now. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. The Holy Spirit is different than religion, okay? Religions put burn, burn flags and burn white sheets in people's yards. Religions drive air, fly airplanes into buildings. Religions blow up stuff. But Jesus, he is love. The Holy Spirit is love. So relationship is way different from religion. In fact, when people tell me, oh, you're religious, I go, oh, I know I'm so not religious. Or they'll say, I don't like religion. I go, I don't like it either. Jesus didn't like it. And they're, huh? They try to reason and figure it out. I don't like religion. I like relationship. When the Holy Spirit dwells in you, we don't have like, like I'm married not because of a contract that says I'm married. Like Nicole's not like, you got to love me. I got this piece of paper. That's dead. It's ink. I love her because she is mine and I am hers and we are one. When you're one with the Holy Spirit, you're not into uh, religion. You're into relationship. So relationship with Jesus doesn't make you seek the stuff. It doesn't make you seek his hand. What can you give me? You seek his face. If you get his face, you get his hand. See what I'm saying? So God's supernatural love should be in us, and that makes you want to wash people's feet, not burn, you know, in people's front yards. That the Holy Spirit makes you want to love people and, 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 and say to people with compassion who's on the side of the road with the Good Samaritan, I want to put you up in a hotel. I want to feed you, clothe you, help you, and serve you. That's what relationship with the Holy Spirit does. So as we're wrapping this up, I want you to also remember that God's supernatural blessing is not on your life to make you rich. It might make you rich, but that's not why you're doing this. I watch people come to church sometimes and they see the blessing of God really hit maybe a, a business person's life. And they go, oh, I want to do that. I want to tithe because I want that to happen to me. That's the wrong relationship. I, you, know, you don't get married because you want to, oh, I want sexual relationship. I mean, that, that's part of it but that's not all of it you want communion because eventually you're going to get really old and you want really to love this person and things don't look the way they did i heard about a, an old man that was walking along and a genie in a bottle popped up and there's a frog and they said if you the frog if you kiss this frog this talking frog it'll turn into a beautiful princess the old man looked at it and he put the frog in his pocket and he said, why didn't you kiss it? He said, at my age, I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> so in, in our, our, relay, our time changes what we desire, but if a desire are predicated on right beliefs and right reasoning and right motive, then it turns out right. Does that make sense? So we're seeking God for the supernatural, not just so we can get healed. That just comes with the, that was just benefit. We're seeking God for supernatural blessing on our life, not so you can get a bigger Cadillac, not so you can get a bigger house, not so you can get a husband, not so you can get a wife. You're seeking God because you love him. And then you love him, 
he puts his super on the natural. In other words, he gets in your boat. You've been rowing, you've been in the flesh, you're still not married. You've been rowing, you're in the flesh, you're going to clubs, you still can't find the right one because you're trying to analyze it. You're trying to, this is enmity against God. You're trying in the flesh because see, and then also God doesn't get any glory. When the 777 South Flagler building hit, God gets all the glory. By the way, uh, their office exploded so big that they needed the space and our office exploded so big that we got too big for the offices and it's huge. So we had to move ourselves off site. We're in another high rise over here and Dennis has taken that whole top floor because he put God in his office. He said, I want, uh, he was the only, you know, big, you know, stock market firm, investing institution firm that had a church inside his office. That was weird sometimes, but it worked for them because God was there. God was on his boat and God blessed Sam Point and God's taken Sam Point to the next level and God's gonna do the same thing for you. He's gonna do it. I wanna pray for you here in a moment, but first of all, I want you to raise your hand and let God see it if you say, man, I tell you, I'm hungry for the supernatural. Raise that hand. I know if you're hungry and you thirst after righteousness, the Bible said you will be filled or you will be fulfilled and God will put his super on your natural. I got story after story after story of supernatural things that happen right here, right there in St. Louis. The building you sit in is a supernatural God thing. Earth City is a God thing. Being on television 13 times uh, across America on BVOVN, God thing. Being on Newsmax, we are on a secular news station, the fastest growing news station in America's Newsmax. They're gaining ground every week. I just read an email a couple days ago about the, uh, now they've, they've, they've grown to 26 million more households in faith churches on there every Sunday morning for free because we went here a guy who owns it, Newsmax, Google Chris Ruddy. Do it, I dare you. Chris Ruddy, Newsmax Magazine. Chris Ruddy started watching us on television, called to have, showed up at our church on a Thursday night. I went to dinner with him. He loves the ministry. He says, I used to go to Billy Graham Crusades with my mom. I'm Catholic, uh, but I went and I have an affinity for evangelists that preach Jesus. And then next thing I know, you know, Bill Clinton's texting him. They're friends. These powerful people are texting him. And he says, hang on. And he's doing this. And then I get a call from him one day and he says, hey, I've been watching you on television and I want to put you on my news channel every Sunday morning for free. Come on, give God praise. If we hadn't obeyed God and, and, and met Randall in Dallas, went to the Caymans with Dennis, started the church on a table, got the office there, wouldn't have expanded the television ministry here, we wouldn't be helping these people. So, it, But it's moving so fast you can't see it. We, we were shooting here, the guys that are helping me shoot right now, and people were stopping going, hey, it's the preacher. Hey, I watch you all the time. These are non-believers, but they respect us. They're getting value. So I'm telling you, God's gonna do this for you. He's gonna put the supernatural blessing on your life to bless you so you can bless this church. We need more television time. We need to help more people. We need to build more churches in St. Louis. We need to build three churches here in Florida. We don't have a, a, a permanent facility here in Florida, but I believe that God's gonna give money to you and you're gonna give money to the church because I'm not gonna go out and, and start businesses. I'm called to preach. And so I'm preaching you're supposed to go make money and you bring the resources back into this house so God can bless us beyond measure. Why? So we can get everybody saved and go home. At the end of the day, this is nothing. As pretty as this is, as pretty as, you know, St. Louis is and fall coming up, it's going to be gorgeous with the hills in Missouri and out towards Antire. It's going to be beautiful, but that pales in comparison to heaven. And God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. So we've got to get this thing right. We go, I'm supernaturally blessed tomorrow on the job. All right, let me pray for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Even our friends watching online. God, I pray tonight, this Tuesday night, that you would bless them, that you would help them, that you would supernaturally put a fresh touch on them. Satan, I rebuke you over them right now, and I say you loose your hold over them and let them go. Let their mind go. Let the addiction go. Let the trauma go. Let the depression go. Let the oppressed go free. I speak to you now that you will never be the same, and you believe in the supernatural. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Come on, give God praise as the campus pastor comes up.